John, when I speak to physicists or philosophers or theologians about how science and religion relate to each other, everyone always describes how different they are in terms of their areas of, uh, of approach and their methodologies. You've talked about similarities. Almost nobody else does. What are some of them? Well, I think the main similarity is that both science and religion are seeking truthful understanding and trying to find it through motivated beliefs. In other words, we're looking at some form of evidence to motivate the beliefs. Um, of course, there are different kinds of beliefs and the different kinds of motivations. Science is dealing with the, the world which, at the, the an impersonal level, where you can put things to the test, where you can repeat things. That mm. gives science the great secret weapon of experiment. Religion is looking at personal and transpersonal encounter with a reality where every experience is unique and cannot be repeated. Mm. Okay, now that, that defines the differences, but yeah. what, are, what are the kinds of similarities in, in what they seek? Well, the similarities are that they have to respond to the way they encounter reality at the level they're looking at it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if science teaches you anything, it teaches you that the world is surprising. I worked in quantum physics. The quantum world is totally different from the world of every day. In the quantum world, if you know where something is, you don't know what it's doing, you know what it's doing, you don't know where it is. That's a different sort of world. So therefore, scientists have learned that the question to ask, I think both within science and beyond it, is not what is reasonable, as if we knew beforehand the shape that reason has to have. Yeah. Nobody would, in 1899, would consider it reasonable that something could behave sometimes like a wave, spread out and flappy, sometimes like a little particle, but that, of course, is how light does behave. So the natural question for a scientist to ask is not, is it reasonable, but what makes you think that might be the case? In other words, I'm not going to tell you beforehand what an acceptable answer is going to be. But if you tell me something surprising, you'll have to produce some motivating evidence to support it. And I'm very happy to approach my religious beliefs in that sort of way too. Religion is full of surprises. Christian religion believes that Jesus is both divine and human. That's an even more <laughs> remarkable mixture than the wave and particle. <laughs> but I think I have reasons for accepting and embracing and indeed committing myself to that belief. Okay. Take that a little bit further in terms of uh, what that should uh, enable us to uh, make progress in both areas uh, uh, in terms of our way of thinking. Well, I think it enables us to um, say that, look, we need to have... A, to look, we need to be what I like to call bottom-up thinkers. Mm. A bottom-up thinker tries to move from ex interpreted experience to understanding. And that, I think, is a strategy that we can follow in religion too. So we have to say, what is the experience that motivates religious beliefs? Some of that experience is very general, looking at the order of the world, looking at the fruitfulness of the world, saying, is there a divine mind and purpose behind it? Some of it is much more personal. Um, it, does God care for individual people in any sort of way? Um, that's the answer that can only be, that can't be answered in general. You have to approach that at a much more um, personal level of engagement. So science would say, though, indeed there are surprises in science, right. but then you can put those surprises to the test and get objective proof, demonstrable and repeated, of those surprises, so then it it may still seem counterintuitive, but it is repeated so often and that there is universal acceptance. Whereas religion, you can never achieve that. In fact, on a universal basis across culture, you have continuing differences that cannot be resolved. Well, science is lucky in having recourse to experiment, and that does help it to get very often into subjective agreement about things. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe me, try it for yourself, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. But there's a whole realm of human encounter, not just religious encounter, but encounter at every sort of personal level, where we don't have that power of repetition. Nevertheless, we do have a power to reach uh, understanding and truth, which is reasonable to commit ourselves to. I mean, just think about the relationship between persons. Um, you know, are you really my friend? If I try and set little traps to, to uh, establish, I'll destroy the possibility of friendship. It has to be based upon trust. But my belief that you're my friend is not an unmotivated belief. And, and similarly, take our aesthetic experience. Uh, Bach's Mass in B minor, I think, is one of the greatest works yes. of art. I can't prove that, and I, I can listen to the, to the, the Mass in B minor several times and persuade you to do so. <laughs> I can't force you to see it as a great work of art. Right. Nevertheless, if we were to write, a, write out everything that, um, in our experience that can't be repeated, as if it was of really no value or interest, it would be an extraordinarily diminished life that we were, we're living. It would be a sort of a lunar landscape. 
It would have replicating information processing systems in it, but it would have no persons in it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Personal knowledge is, is in inevitably uh, more elusive, but also much more profound and important than repeatable impersonal knowledge. So let's follow the analogy. Uh, I love box mass in B minor, but it's not my favorite piece. Uh, okay. Maybe Beethoven's Missa Solemnis or Mahler's Second Symphony. Okay, yeah. So we have different views on that, but in music, uh, that's quite harmonious. Yes. But if uh, you believe that Jesus is God right. and I believe uh, in the Buddha right. uh, or, or some Hindu God, that, that's uh, not the same thing. That's quite incompatible. Well, I don't think it's quite incompatible. It certainly poses very severe problems. I think one of the, the biggest challenges to religious belief today is this fact that, that there are people of very different faith traditions. They're obviously speaking about the same form of human experience, an encounter with something you might say the spiritual uh, dimension of, 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 of reality. That's the case. But they say such different things about it. Yes. Not just about um, the status of Buddha or the status of Jesus, but things like, what about the human person? The Abrahamic faiths all see the human person as of unique and continuing significance. Correct. Our Hindu friends see the person as, in some sense, recycled through reincarnation. And our Buddhist friends, if I understand them right, see the person as ultimately uh, uh, an illusion of which to seek release. Now, those aren't three sets of people saying the same thing in culturally different languages. There are crashes. <laughs> and that's a very serious, very serious problem. And, and, and I, th I think it's a problem that we are really just beginning to take seriously People in other faith traditions are no longer strange people in faraway countries. They're living down the street. Mm. We can see that their lives have an authenticity. Mm. And I think one of the great challenges to um, religious theological thinking, not just in the 21st century, but I think the third millennium, will be to try and understand how the world faith mm. relations relate to each other. I don't think they're simply in direct conf confrontation, equally they're not all saying the same thing in mm. culturally different languages. Mm. It's a very subtle and difficult area to explore and of great importance. John, summing up over your uh, great career in both science and religion, what is your emotional sense? I know we know your intellectual sense, but as you look at science and religion, uh, what, 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 what insight can you give us from your own personal emotion? Well, I derive, I've derived great satisfaction from my life as a scientist. I am very grateful to have played a small part in, in, a, in a great human endeavor. The center of my life, however, is my religious belief. That's a, that is what I really commit myself to, both uh, in present um, experience and, and also in hope for the future. So that, that's, that, that's the center of my commitment. But I fortunately don't believe I have to choose between the two. I believe I can be two-eyed, I can look at the eye of science, look at the eye of religion, and I'll see more with that binocular vision than I will with either eye on its own.